Good morning, I'm Jan Cope, Provost of the Cathedral, and I'm delighted to welcome you to our service this morning on Tuesday, April the 16th. Today is the feast day of Peter Williams Cassie and Anna Besant Cassie. Let us pray. Lord God, you've brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect for this feast day. O God of justice and mercy, we remember before you your servants Peter Williams Cassie and Anna Besant Cassie, who in the face of slavery and discrimination gave the blessings of education and spiritual haven to the marginalized. Grant us to be fearless in the face of injustice and to work for blessings that will touch those whom the world does not count of value. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The scripture appointed for today is from the Gospel of Matthew, the fifth chapter beginning at the 13th verse. You are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. No one after lighting a lamp puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. The people we remember today are truly remarkable. And I'm going to take the liberty of reading their biography as captured in Lesser Feasts and Fasts. I confess I was not as familiar with them as I now am, and perhaps that may be the same of you. Peter Williams Cassie was ordained as a deacon in 1866, the first person of color ordained in the Episcopal Church west of the Mississippi River. He was a fourth generation freed African American. His great grandfather bought his freedom and founded the first black church in New York, the African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church. His grandfather, was the first African-American Episcopal priest in New York and founder of St. Philip's in Manhattan. His parents, Joseph and Amy Cassie, were prominent abolitionists in Philadelphia. Peter received the best classical education available at the time, speaking and fluently reading Greek, Hebrew, and Latin. He arrived in San Francisco in 1853 and worked as a barber. He helped to organize a community association to protect African Americans and other people of color. In the late 1850s, he moved to San Jose, San Jose California, where he formed an abolitionist group to help free slaves. Peter married Annie Besant, who came from another prominent African American family. They were among the founding members of Trinity Parish, San Jose, California in 1862. At the same time, they rented the former Bascom School for Girls and established St. Philip's Mission for Colored People and opened St. Philip's Academy. The school was not only for African Americans, but also for Mexican and Chinese students because no children of color could attend public schools. 1862. Bishop William Ingram Kipp, first bishop of California, recognized St. Philip's as a mission congregation out of Trinity Church and ordained Peter as a deacon in 1866. Although he would go on to lead several congregations, he was never ordained as a priest because of barriers caused by racism in the Episcopal Church at the time. The bishop directed him to establish Christ Church for Colored People in San Francisco while Annie kept St. Philip's going. 
Later, this church would split into the African-American Church of St. Cyprian and Christ Nippon Seiko Kai, Japanese American Episcopal Church. In 1881, Peter was called to St. Cyprian's Episcopal Church in New Bern, North Carolina, as the first African-American rector in that state. In 1884, he accepted a call to Florida where he served three parishes in succession until he died at the age of 86 on April 16, 1917. Bishop Edwin Gardner Reed said at Peter's funeral, quote, that no other clergyman in the diocese came close to the theological maturity and scholarship that Peter Williams Cassie exhibited in his ministry and teachings. We should be proud of these great souls that helped lay the foundations of this diocese." End quote. I wish I could say that racism and an unlevel playing field for opportunity are a thing of the past, but we know that the sin of racism and injustice is a part of the American fabric still today. May we all redouble our efforts to live into our baptismal covenant, to strive for justice and peace among all people, and to respect the dignity of every human being. No exceptions. A prayer for social justice. Almighty God, who created us in your own image, Grant us grace fearlessly to contend against evil and to make no peace with oppression, and that we may reverently use our freedom. Help us to employ it in the maintenance of justice in our communities and among the nations, to the glory of your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now I invite you to join me in the prayer our Savior Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace this day and always. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.